Item. January 13th, Board of Urbana Free Library, Board of Trustees meeting will come to order. Do I have a motion for the consent agenda? I think you need, we need a roll call. Do we always do a roll call? <laughs> we haven't, but we will. <laughs> How's that? Okay, roll call. <laughs> James? Here. Here. Beth? Here. Chris? Here. Mark? Here. Huh? Yes. Bill? Here. And Jack? Yes. Here. One absent. One absent. Okay, now can I have a <laughs> motion for the consent agenda? So moved. A second. Second. Okay. Any comments, sir? If not, we'll move on to petitions and communications. Have a comment? I didn't see any. Did somebody raise their hand? No, I am sure. No. Then we need to further comments. Petitions and communications. Public comment first. Do we have anybody that wants to speak to the board? If not, do we have any presentations from the staff or anybody? If not, we'll move on to the items for action and discussion. Building on grounds. Any report other than what we have? Kathy mentioned that she submitted a grant yes. to the Illinois Library, the Library of Illinois. Um, for a live and learn grant that would help fund uh, a good chunk of a new boiler and air handler system. We hope to hear about the grant sometime in March. Mm -hmm. There is a, a local match. It it's about a 50 50, isn't it? It would be a little bit more. If we receive the full amount of 125000 that could come to us through the grant, our, our cost share would be about 111000 112000 So um, we would talk about the ways we could pay for that, including money we already put aside for capital expenses and other options. I want to tell you, I read this grant, and she did, Kathy did an immense amount of research and talking about our whole system and how we have a heating and air conditioning system that is many, year, many years out of date, and it could go at any time, and we'd be out of business. Mm -hmm. And she put it down pretty strong. So <laughs> it was good. It was a good proposal. And we have no idea what the competition is, but I would think any committee sitting in Springfield would say, Hmm, Urbana's got some reasoning here. They've waited long enough. Ah, no. Okay, technology, any report? Do you have anything? Not right now. Okay, finances. We have the January budget revisions mm -hmm. for action. Do I have a motion to approve the budget we'll corrections? Approve the budget amendment. A second? A second. Okay, Celeste, would you like to lead us off with what? Well, let's ask if there's any questions in what you've had in front of you. Because Celeste can explain anything that you would like answers to. Uh -huh. It's pretty straightforward. It is. It's pretty clear. Yeah, I, I like the, the layout. I, I think that mm -hmm. just really helps the clarity. And mm -hmm. kind of you can look at the first glance and think, oh, and then you can delve in. So I, I definitely appreciate the changes made. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And would you make the announcement as to what happened from city council? Well, Bill, would you uh, like to say? Bill? Um, well, TIF 1 is the downtown um, tax increment financing district, and every year they distribute a certain amount that's uh, considered excess uh, with an agreement with the school board in order to extend it the last time, I think in 2006, or something like that. Um, or maybe it's a little bit earlier than that, but fairly recently they made an agreement with the school board to extend that TIF district, and part of that agreement was that they would distribute excess every year. So every taxing body gets a portion of that excess. I think the school district got 200 some thousand dollars, but it's divided up by um, you know how much how much of your taxes go to the various mm -hmm. um, jurisdictions. So the library usually doesn't get that. Usually it's in the Urbana. It just goes back yeah. to Urbana. So I pointed out that the library has actually has a line item kind of, uh, you know, an amount of taxes that is part of our, it's 56 cents out of the Urbana, it's $1.35 to goes to the library. So of the 35000 that Urbana would have got, we're going to get about 14700 mm -hmm. I think, for the library. Wow. So, my God. Thank you. <laughs> so this is Good excess job. money. I hate to say it that way, but we may want to consider what we do with it. This may be an opportunity to do some of the projects that we have always said we'd like to do. It might be materials. It might be something else. I imagine staff has some ideas already. 
you raised your hand like you had one. Oh no, I was just oh. this okay. is fresh news. Right. So, yes, it's fresh. I didn't um, even know the the amount. Yeah, the tip I, this TIF district's going to expire like within a year or two. So unfortunately, oh. if it was something that you know would keep going on for another eight or ten years, then we could probably put it aside for capital improvements or something like that. But so yeah, it's probably like a one one time thing. Consider it one time maybe money. Maybe one more year. Right. From, so um, for next month's budget amendment, which I expect mm -hmm. there to be a budget amendment for next month, as we, um, if you approve this budget amendment, mm -hmm. which includes retro pay and the salary increases as is listed, mm -hmm. once the retro pay is really paid out and we know where all the different lines come in, yeah. then we can talk about um, whether we move the money in from fund balance, we could have this money go in there, and, and cover the difference. We're, we're close. I'm very proud of how hard we all worked to find money in this year's budget for the salary increases for staff this year. And we found it was an extra, not quite $5,000 that could help cover part of the retro pay, which is about 25-ish thousand dollars. So we worked really hard to not impact the public negatively mm -hmm. and to um, keep the services where they are, keep the hours where they are, and get cut back in things like postage in other areas and, and shift funds within different departments. Maybe you could Jackie, give us a two minute explanation of how you've actually found that money. And I mean, I know you weren't looking under, under rugs and floor mats and stuff like that, but uh, sure. So, so how did, how did, how did you, what was the process? We were, as I was just saying, we were focusing on sustainable changes first. Mm -hmm. So we looked through our centralized cost. So for example, things like uh, the postage or um, for example, Becky, discovered that she could negotiate a better price for our waste hauling price, mm -hmm. saving us hundreds of dollars a month over a period of years, better deals that we got with our internet service provider, that we had, um, people had made good decisions that we we're reaping the benefits of, as well as in some cases we over budgeted for what our actual needs are. So we looked at those things first, because those are things that are sustainable going forward, and that was a good chunk of the money. And then we looked across the different departments. And so, for example, you, there's a place up front where our income's going down a little bit, but it's because that was income that a position paid for in archives. So not to delve too deep, that position line is not being used. So that money gave us a net gain by saying, we don't, we, we're not getting this income, but we don't have this expense. Mm -hmm. And so that money paid for, quote unquote, the salary increases in the archives department. Oh, yeah. But when we say that line's not being used, we have not neglected that line. I mean, that line's still there. The work is being done in a different way. Yeah. Okay. And so the income is different, but the work is being done. Patrons are being served, certainly. But needs of the patrons have changed, and we are working to change our workflow given the needs of the patrons and the work that needs to be done. So we look first for sustainable recurring savings mm -hmm. that we can then bank on as we look ahead to the future as well as then looking at the different departments and talking to the department heads and seeing what are the needs for the staffing at the level of your desks, where, where are you under budget already, and so what type of increases do we need to accommodate the staff increases? And in some cases, the department directors and managers said they didn't need extra money in some lines, whereas other lines they did. So we talked across the different departments to come up with this, and I'm, again, very pleased to, to do that. Yay, team. Yeah. Mm. It was a team. What was, was a team. Um, what's the difference between telecom and telephone? Telecom went down by $2,800, $3,300, 500 That has to do with our internet service provider with um, Illinois Century Network. Network, thank you. I see on the state network. And so we have a different yeah. plan now that costs they something like 30 some dollars a month versus hundreds of dollars a month. Mm. And so um, they're offering a different plan. We've had it for a while. But in part, we wanted to make sure the savings was staying before rebudgeting, and this is a good opportunity to rebudget. We also looked at different um, staff lines. So for example, we, we um, looked at the health insurance line like we talked about doing. Mm -hmm. We had over budgeted for health insurance in the past with the excess money in the RHS fund, which then is itself overfunded. So we talked about this last month, and what we did here is say, what is it that we actually will be spending on health insurance for staff? the staff people on individual basis, as, as well as when part-time staff work over their base amount, they accrue benefits in part um, more health insurance. And we were able to set aside an appropriate amount to cover that if in the past years it's the same amount of money 
we put that amount of money aside so that the library isn't short. It hasn't really been budgeted for in the past fully, and I feel like it, it is now. So we're able to make some changes that put us in a better financial position. So. Well, I want to thank y'all, and I think the staff should too, because this is, mm -hmm. when we started looking at this, uh, as we looked at the salary increase targets, this is, this is like a big nightmare. How are we going to do this? And, uh, uh, and the retro, that was the, the other retro, problem. yeah, and annualizing them in yeah. ways that don't don't hurt us two, three years down the road. So, thank you, thank all of you for. Are and, there, and those who aren't here, who have got a hand in this? Yeah. Too, so. Are there other comments or questions from the board members? You, I think, like you're right, the the display in terms of yellow made it easy to <laughs> work through and yes. and see what the difference was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the explanations also. And the explanation yeah, at, the, the, at the bottom. I like at the, the bottom. At the bottom. Okay. Note, et cetera, Thank you. Yeah. Or put okay. it another way, I think I understand it. <laughs> Ask anytime. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion to approve the revised budget signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. That's great. And again, our thanks to the entire staff, mm -hmm. particularly the people sitting in this room. We expect this to go into effect the next paycheck, which starts Monday. Retro will come out a little bit past that, but the increases in the salary will start right away. Does the retro have to be on a regular pay scale, or is it, it can go at any time? It can go out at a different any time. time. Okay. Yeah. And I assume everybody on the staff knows about this activity. I will be dancing joyfully. I will be dancing joyfully later, so they'll notice that if nothing else. <laughs> okay. Policy. Board bylaws. There really is very minor changes. So do I have a motion to approve the changes to the board bylaws? So moved. Second to that? Second. Are there questions or concerns? If you notice Mm -hmm. I don't have mine up there. It's like the last page. There's one. Is this just a minor typo on the second page? It may have. Oh, on the second page? Yeah, it's conflict of interest. It's five by There should be a space after the five. What is that? G, conflict of interest. G, conflict of interest. It's just a typo. The five ILCS? Yeah, it should be a okay. space. Okay. Oh. Just editorial, so that doesn't. Yeah, editorial. Yeah. 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 On, on the first page, too, number one, the basis of board authority. Is it the only complied statute or compiled? Compiled. 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 Oh wow! I yes, I think yeah. I, had, I had mentioned that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, I just read it. Been that way, so thank you for catching that. And like I say, the last page is under H is the only real thing. Okay, all those in favor of changing the policy bylaws of the Board of Trustees, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Approved. The patron rules of behavior for discussion. I have got one, one thing on that, which the very bottom is the picky thing, the amended November 12th and then amended February 10th. Was that because we were going to do something Specifically on debt date. That's your next. That's our next board meeting. Okay, that's okay. So this is oh, this is a discussion. Okay, this is yes. just discussion. All right, yeah. all right. Because I didn't look ahead to see when the next board meeting was. Can I figure that? Can I yeah. double check? I'm not sure I have one. I have. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I see it at the top. <laughs> I'm sorry. This was not as uh, nice as it should have been. So here, Mark, let me give you. I. Well. Okay. Good luck. What, did, what was it before? Uh, it was nine pages long. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so we went from nine pages to two pages? Yes. Cool. Um, Anna? Yes. Okay. Do yeah, you got more to add? I would be happy we can run some more. We need to enlighten it, but Anna's got a question. Is this the ahead. rules of behavior we're talking about now? Yes. Or, okay. As I mentioned to Celeste earlier, I have a couple of editorial things. I'll give that to you. Thank you. I have a, I have two substantive. Uh, under on the first page, number nine, strong odors. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think I know what that's getting at, but I wondered whether perfume is included in that. Yes. Okay. That's because why it's that's a big issue. Broad. For okay, so that's all right. Very good. Then in the following one, in the next number ten, look, the um, second sentence. We have two maybe maybes. That one. Of those okay, one of those goes out, but yeah. they may not be carried. Or they may be carried into the library. Yes, they, they may, may be carried into the library. Okay. Skateboards, etc. We, we expect people will keep them with them. There's not an easy way to safely lock them up. Okay. And then bicycles are treated separately, be, and they cannot be carried in. Correct. But skateboards may be carried in, but can, cannot be used. Okay. So the knot is across there. And I'll give this to you. Thank you. Before. Other questions or comments? Okay, we will not be voting on this particular item tonight, but that is available for you to look for other things, Anna. <laughs> I'll give it to Celeste, and okay. I'll see it next month, and sure. try again. Anything on the education and training? Um, can we go back just a second? Maybe? Sure. Just on the uh, what we prohibit, gambling and panhandling on, on library property, I'm cool with that. Um, political activities in the library. So it's okay to hand out political information outside the library. Correct. Okay. And that's something the board had revised just uh, 2013, I believe. I don't know you part on the board at the time, Mark, but we did have some outside the building that was concerned at that time. Oh, yeah. we, uh, the university had it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a gentleman did make use of that opportunity this year to uh, solicit signatures this year mm -hmm. outside the building but by the doors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I think also as, when you touch on political, I know we had somebody for Champagne took the time out to criticize us. I think when there was a political announcement made in the library, but the, but this room was rented by one of the two parties, and that's not the library endorsing it. Right. I mean, that, so yeah, that would be permitted if a, if a group wants to come. In. We don't care which group kind of wants to come in here, I mean, as long as they're not advocating the violent overthrow of the United States. Um, if they want to rent the space and make a press conference, that's fine. But I don't think it's always clear to people on the other who don't work with this stuff every day. Okay, moving on to the liaison reports. Anna, anything from library friends? They do not meet in January. Okay. The foundation did not meet, right? Correct. Heartland, anything to report? Jane, do you have anything to report from Heartland? No. You're good friends at Heartland. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving into the administrative staff. Celeste, any other items that you have that you'd like to share with us? Nope, we are in good shape. Thank you. Very good. This is a short meeting. Kathy, Kathy's not here. She's been working hard. <laughs> Adult. Nothing. Wow. Children's services. Nothing new. Other than what's on your report. Archives. Anka. <laughs> Circulation. Anybody? <laughs> Did we do any work this time? Did a lot of work. I mean, it, yeah, I know, but, but it was I all know, clearly, sense, yeah. again, yeah. Like, very nice. Yeah, yeah, I guess I had a question but about now, something. I, I saw like somebody short. said there was going to be a uh, web application for research fee or something like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? In the archives? In the archives. Is uh, there a, do we charge a, a research fee or something? We charge a research fee for people who contact us from um, outside of Rodana. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. if somebody um, emails us and they request um, documents, um, uh, and we charge them a $10 non-refundable um, fee based on what they found in the catalog, just um, confirming what we have it. And then we charge them an additional um, 50 cents per page for, in most cases these days, a scan. Uh, so we send them digital copies of whatever requests they make. And these requests might come from 
people in Chicago, it may come from someone in Boston, maybe someone in England. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, they are from kind of all over. Um, and that the reason why we instituted the research fee um, is, I mean, that's true for people who use the archives in general, but certainly true for people who contact us online. These are not urban residents. Mm -hmm. um, and I think knowing that we have staff who spend time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, service, servicing those patrons, and these are not cardholders. Um, we don't expect them to have a non-resident card. Many of these people are um, patrons who are, you may spend a couple days here and then leave. Um, we felt like that we should show that we are um, not giving free services mm -hmm. to people who are not. By the users. That's interesting. You talk about it's, let's say somebody came to the library from out of town, used the facility, made their own copies, paid for those copies. Would there be a research fee for them? No. No. It's when our staff has time invested. Right, because we yeah. spend like mm -hmm. um, it's uh, you know we don't make copies for our patrons who come. Um, we don't scan. Yeah. We will help them obviously, yeah. but um, you know a patron you know unless they have. Um, you know, a reason why they need additional help if they have a disability, they cannot use the scanner. I mean, obviously yeah. it will help them, but somebody can't just walk in the archives and say, here's a list of documents. Mm -hmm. Get yeah, it for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's essentially what patients are asking us to do when they're contacting us from outside. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, we just needed to, and $10 is a very reasonable mm -hmm. research fee, and that in general, even though we don't have it spelled out that specifically, I you know I assume that is about up to an hour of time, um, give or take. And sometimes it can take more. Um, and then it's if it's a much more in-depth research request, again for somebody who's contacting us from out of state, we then refer them to the local a local researcher. Mm -hmm. Who will charge a lot more? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then, can they just pay with a credit card online or something? Um, currently, they cannot, but it's something that we're working on. Okay. So currently, people send in checks, or if they are contacting, contacting us from outside the United States, um, actually, in many cases, we just they send us dollars because <laughs> it's so expensive to transact mm -hmm. with foreign currency through banks in well, either direction. Mm -hmm. um, that um, often we will just get dollars. Thanks. Mm -hmm. sure. mm. That's good to know too. Actually, I had a general question. So, how did I ask this every time this happens? What impact did the snow days for the schools have on our? Um, number of people coming in or not. So did we actually, did we have increased numbers saying the schools are closed? Oh, let's brave the cold and come to the library or say, gosh, it's cold, let's just all stay. So you're saying, yes, we did have. We had immediately when I found out that the schools were closed, we put out crafts okay. for the kids on the tables because we knew we were going to have a lot of a lot of people. So instead of having that influx in the afternoon, like from 3 to 5, 3 to 7, something like that, they came in more during the day. But Saturday, we had a program here for a music program for young children, and there were 60 people here. And it was a cold day. Saturday was but very people cold. People were yes. ready to get out. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's okay. okay. So that's why I was wondering whether the, you had the cabin fever versus just battling right. the cold yeah. outside. Right. And most of the children are accompanied by a, by a parent then or not? Yeah, most of the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess on this, this graph um, of the web page usage? Yes. That, wasn't there some change in the way they collected? Yes. Or what they considered? Just, I was, I don't know if you're going to do this again, or is this something you're going to do every month? or? This is an 11 year look. I mean, every, are you going to update this at all? Once a year. Okay. We have to, they, I just suggest year. putting on the graph something that indicates why that big plunge is there. That, sure. you know, so in case somebody downloads this, they understand that you know, our, our server didn't crash or something. I can update that right now. I don't think Thanks. I would say something about the redesign of that page, too, because there is, when you go to print out, you're printing out a lot of stuff on the side that you don't care about, the bars. If printing. If you go to the bottom, there's a print-friendly version of each of the pages. 
Mm -hmm. I can show okay. you later. I'll take a look because yeah. I printed out stuff I really didn't want, and what I really wanted was the dates over at the right, and they were pushed off. Okay. So I thought it was a problem with what it was laid out. Okay. Let me I mean, to print. It's just the go to print. Mm -hmm. Might be a problem. I don't know. Okay. Any other questions? If not, let's move into new business, the non-residential card fees. Do, do, do you see a big difference with the notary fee? The notary um, Yes. It's fairly consistent. It's a little less than last year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we'll get to 7,000, but we'll be probably over 6,000. Okay. So if we have less disagreement with charging a fee than we thought we would and people seem very happy to pay it. And do we have a do we have a piece of paper on the so non residential? Let's fee? see. Um, oh, here. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Is there any question as to okay may I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Oh, second. Any additional questions or discussion? Well, I think it just, we just want to point out that it's based on the value, the taxable value of people's residences. So people outside of Urbana in a certain dollar house would be paying the same for the library fee as the people residents of Urbana living in the same value house. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favor of approving the residential, non residential card fee, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, the next item, if approved, was approved. The next item is the Executive Director's Evaluation Committee, and I had asked a couple persons, and I will reiterate that this evening, to serve in that committee. It's an ad hoc committee. And Jane, would you continue to serve? And Jeff, will you work on that? Yes. Yeah. So we'll get that process under, underway. And this is, we had a half year evaluation, and now we're going to have the True thing, we'll really get down to the nuts and bolts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do I have a motion that we go into closed session to discuss property? Um, so we'll, with all of this, read this. And we'll be going to closed session for property pursuant to the <laughs> Illinois compiled statutes 120 <laughs> slash 2, friend C, friend 5. Where we have a vote. Oh, I guess we have a second. 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 Yeah. Roll call. Jane? Yes. Anna? Yes. Beth? Yes. Yes. Mark? Yes. Huh? Yes. Bill? Yes. 